Welcome to the Alien Probe Podcast. To the casual observer, Oak Island, a small assuming island off the southern shore of Nova Scotia, Canada, may not seem particularly special. But dig deeper and you'll find that it has had over 50 books written about it, raised the interest of important historical figures, and served as the topic of countless documentaries. Joining me today again is Deb. I know you're excited. I am so excited. Can't We've wait to talk about We've had a lot of discussions this. about the Oak Island, and we're talking about the mystery, not and the TV show, of course. We're not big fans. It's been no secret over... And yet you record every episode. I Yeah, I need to stop recording it. Anyway, well, no, or I shouldn't say that. Maybe as you go through this, you'll... Um, Anyway, I ran across the story in Reader's Digest while taking my morning sabbatical in a I was say, that cabin. Had, that had to have been in a bathroom. In, 19, in 1988, Reader's, Reader's Digest. And it fascinated me. So when the show came out, I was all over it. And I did I did watch it. And I, I spent a lot of time watching the show. So, um, you know, let, let go ahead and uh, I'll let you kick it off. Oh, you know, let me tell the story of Oak Island because I... <laughs> Have been fascinated with it for how many how many episodes have you watched? Do you about think? three or four. Only three or four. Yeah, usually. Did I, you become disenchanted after just three or four? I think usually when you try to turn it on and give you that look like ugh, anything else. So Oak Island has been the site of a quest for buried treasure for near, nearly two centuries, and so much money. My God, those guys spend some money. Linked with Shakespeare, Marie Antoinette, Captain Kidd, and Franklin D. Roosevelt, Oak Island's mysterious money pit, yes, I've heard about the money pit, the money pit, has provided generations of treasure hunters with endless material for speculation, theory, and hope. Its latest excavators, treasure hunters, treasure hunting brothers, Rick and Marty Legina, how do you pronounce Legina? Legina, Legina, Legina. Not, uh, Legina. <laughs> I don't know. Have brought its mysterious allure to millions of viewers worldwide with their documentary show on the History Channel. So what is the secret of Oak Island? And what have the brothers unearthed that others before them have not? Tell us, Doug. Well, the secret of Oak Island is, well, anyway, so the Oak, the legend of Oak Island starts in 1799. While out on a fishing expedition, the story goes, three teenage boys, Daniel McGinnis, Anthony Vaughn, and John Smith had discovered a depression in the ground after they came ashore to restock on supplies. Investigating the strange depression, they soon found that the dirt was noticeably loose, unlike the surrounding hard-packed ground. McGinnis had heard a story involving a sailor from the crew of the infamous Scottish pirate Captain Kidd, R, R. who had supposedly buried a treasure over two million years, two million, oh, over two million pounds from Kidd's loot somewhere in the surrounding area, and they thought that they had possibly found its resting place. Digging down, the three boys dug down for over 30 feet. After finding a layer of flagstones, oak platforms, and tool marks, and pick scrapes on the wall of the pit. For some unclear reason, after digging 30 feet down, the boys decided to abandon their search and return home. Dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> some of, or their mom was calling. They up. just got. To, they just for some, you know, 30 feet's a long way to dig. I'd be damn tired. Some accounts cite superstition as the main reason, while others believe they may have found something and kept it a secret. Oh, those pirates! Whatever the reason, the pit which the boys had dug, then already called the money pit, was abandoned. That's interesting because I would have never stopped. But there must have, maybe they, like it said, maybe there was the, uh, when they say superstition, I don't know, they were, something might have popped up there that freaky, we don't know about. Yeah. The boys' story did not go unnoticed. A few years later, a group known as the Onslow Company returned to the island, this time equipped with excavation tools, and continued to dig, continued to dig McGinnis had started. Digging down to 90 feet, uh, see? they continued to find stacked layers of logs in 10 feet intervals until they found a large stone inscribed with mysterious symbols. Ooh. The stone story remains mysterious to this day. 
First reported in 1862 in a local newspaper, it was described as a quote, I can't see this now, you, 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 stone cut square, two feet long and about a foot thick with several characters cut on it. I had to move forward, I was so excited about it. I know, so you're just next. turning the page before I can. <laughs> You think I've memorized this symbol, my No, page. we got this all in our head when you yeah. talk about page. Uh-huh. The symbols remain undeciphered for many years, and the stone itself has been lost. Oh, well, of course it has. Interesting. But you know, it's just lost. It. It's just lost. <laughs> I put it in my pocket. I don't know what happened. That's kind of weird. Okay, so, but some accounts of the characters say they hint at a giant treasure, although, you know, hopefully there's a picture. What is it? A picture of a box with <laughs> stuff it's coming out of it? pirate ship. There are many speculations and theories about what that treasure might actually be. Because, you know, everybody's treasure is something different. That's Some right. believe that it might be Marie Antoinette's jewels. That would be boring. Oh, while others speculate. <laughs> well, I mean, they cut her head off. You know, that's, oh. While others speculate <laughs> that the pit. And then the necklace fell off. <laughs> it happens, yes. Others speculate that the pit hides manuscripts indicating Francis Bacon was the actual author behind the works of William Shakespeare. Uh, that's interesting. Shakespeare. Oh, Shakespeare. The pit Shakespeare. has also, over the years, provided extraordinary evidence. It's not without reason that the island has been home to the efforts of researchers, adventurers, and historians for over 200 centuries. No, it says two centuries. Okay, good, because I was going to say that's a long time. <laughs> that's Stop a long time. adding hundreds. Okay, two centuries. Okay, that's... 200 That's years. better, yeah. Okay. okay. One of the island's most prominent researchers was a man by the name of William Chappelle. Chappelle became involved in the Oak Island excavations in the late 1920s. That's the dog scratching behind me. <laughs> Following a newspaper article he had read on the subject. He traveled up to Canada to dig and see what he could find. In his excavations, he found an axe, a fluke anchor, and a pick in his dig t- in his dig tools, which prom- prompted him to believe there must have been some sort of dig on the site in ancient times. After Chappelle's efforts, Dave Chappelle, the efforts and funds wow. ran dry, the American industrialist Gilbert Eden took over the money pit, the, pit's digging efforts, harnessing the resources of Bethlehem Steel Company, which that's big, Oh, um, which boy. he owned. Yeah, I, so wow. That gives you their services, right? Yeah. He took over operations at the island after consulting with British journalist Harold T. Wilkins. He is my favorite. Hedden, really? Yeah, Hedden he's my favorite journalist. Came to believe what it was William Kidd, Captain Kidd, who left the treasure on the island. A few years after his initial dig, he purchased a portion of the island and started a full scale excavation. People like to dig. They like little children. One of William Chappelle's most important discovery w- discoveries was a fluke anchor. I don't know what a fluke anchor is, but I can imagine because it's fluke. It's probably an anchor that's kind of d- shaped like a whale's tail. Oh, which is known be. as a fluke. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, You're very yeah, good. I, know. I know these very things. Very nice. Um, which was found on the tunnel, and there was also an instrument that appeared to be a 250-year-old Acadian axe. Other essential discoveries included parts of an oil lamp and a miner's pick. How these artifacts got to the remote island and why they were all buried in approximately the same place remains a mystery. But strengthens the conviction of those who believe that there is more to the island than meets the eye. I must add that I've seen episode after episode after episode of this. And um, I, I eventually just stopped. (laughs) <laughs> every every now and then we have to watch an episode yeah, to, just see, to see you know. if there's anything different happening but you know one of the most compelling reasons researchers believe that there really is treasure hidden on oak island is the vast amount of wars and conflicts that occurred around the time the island was first discovered including the french indian war and the seven years war Wars have a tendency to drive people away, seeking safety and stability in odd places Oak Island is, even today, just about the farthest away anyone can get from Europe's long and bloody wars. So if anyone was looking to hide their riches away from the dangers of wars and had the means to get there, Oak Island would have been an ideal location. Another set of historical circumstances make Oak Island an attractive location to bury treasure. Pirates... Pirate. Between the years 60... You have to say that every time you say pirate. God. That was you. Arr. Arr. 
<laughs> Between... They probably never said that. <laughs> <gasps> but all pirates say are. <laughs> Between the years 1690 and 1730, during the period historians call the Golden Age of Piracy, are many pirates were known to travel to and around the mysterious Oak Island. Aside from being a gold mine for natural resources, where pirates could safely stock up on wood, water, and other important provisions away from the major naval powers, the island was also an ideal place for those pirates to stash their treasures and loot. Loot. It does. I mean, it does make sense, and I understand why you know the people are looking after it. Many people believe the pirates had indeed left their riches on the island, but one treasure hunter in particular might surprise you. Franklin Delano Roosevelt Good became FDR. interested in unveiling the secret of Oak Island as a young man. Roosevelt joined Captain Henry L. Bowden, Boyden, Bowden, Bowden. in. August of 1909 as part of an expedition organized by the Old Gold Salvage Group. The group had come equipped with divers and advanced excavation equipment, but were unable to find anything of interest in the money pit. Despite their lack of success, Roosevelt continued to show interest in Oak Island and kept up with developments and news regarding the hunt for treasure there for the rest of his life, even as President of the United States. Oh, wow. That's interesting. The legend of Oak Island continued to entice many treasure hunters throughout the years. In 1959, Robert Restall came with his 18-year-old son and his work partner and friend, Carly Grazer, after signing a contract with one of the property owners on the island. Working at the site for several years in 1965, dug a shaft down to the depth of 27 feet. On August 17th, Robert Restall, who explored the shaft alone, was overcome by hydrogen sulfide fumes. His son went in after him and also lost consciousness. Oh, great. Grazer and two additional working hands then went in in an attempt to save the two. Tragically, Restall, his son Grazer, and one of the working hands all perished in the shaft. A somber reminder that treasure hunting isn't just a fun adventure, but also full of risks and danger. But it seems that in recent years, another family has made some serious headway in finding the secret of Oak Island. Enter the brothers. The brothers. Marty and Rick Legina. Sorry, I can't. Legina. I have no idea. I'm going to go with them, Legina. I just call them Marty and Rick. Legina. Marty and Rick. For oh, all yeah. intents and purposes. And we love Marty and I Rick. I think it's Legina. I think Legina. I've heard of that. Okay, Legina. And I love Marty and Rick, and I think they're very, I lo- love their enthusiasm for this. Um, but man, they're, okay. So anyway, for <laughs> all intents and purposes, dedicated their entire lives to solving the riddle of Oak Island and unlocking its hidden secrets with the hope of treasure in their hearts. While they have spent many years toiling hard to uncover this island's secrets with very little headway, very little headway. Uh-huh. It appears that their latest treasure hunting expedition has finally taken a productive turn, Deb. That's good. In recent years, the brothers have made some serious discoveries on Oak Island, and some say opened a door to uncovering its hidden treasures. The Laginas, Lagina, <laughs> what desired Just, yeah, sure. uh, um, find out the truth behind Oak Island treasure can be traced back to their early childhood. The two brothers have been fascinated with the hidden and the mysterious since the very beginning. At just 10 years of age, Rick had made his first discovery, and following that initial foray into the world of buried treasure, he decided to pursue a career in treasure hunting, training, learning, and building himself up with that singular purpose in mind. In 2006... The brothers decided to pursue their. Tra- I'm not. I'm just. I'm not just gonna. I'm, no, the, to pursue their to pursue their treasure hunting dream full time, following extensive research into the Oak Island legend, and several expeditions to the island and its famed money pit. The two siblings purchased fifty percent of the Oak Island Tour Company, which included land on the island and the rights to any treasure found on it, while the other half remained owned by the local Blankenship clan. Ask any treasure hunter worth their salt about Oak Island, and they'll tell you about the Oak Island curse. The curse, there's always a curse. A historic legend asserts that seven people need to die before the island's treasure can be found. I mean, it's interesting how they. I wonder seven where people. They, 
Where are we up to? Three? Oh, here you go. Well, only those the two. There you go. You know, right. Oh, today. Well, I have an answer for you, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. I can answer that question. To date, six people have lost their lives in quest for treasure over a period of nearly 100 years. And while a random coin or artifact have been earthed from time to time, some skeptics doubt that the island truly holds a massive prize. But even among believers, the question remains, is seven lives too, lives too high a price to pay? Well, come on. Somebody throw themselves in a pit. Oh. Be number seven. Oh, wow. Well, come on. Wow. Make that sacrifice. <laughs> who might... What, who do you suggest? Oh, I'm not. I'm not gonna, <laughs> but come on. If seven... We're, we're up to... We got six. What's what? I mean, come on. Somebody. One of those really old guys that are up there. After years of... Ex- I thought there You're was one even, other person that... Oh, but that we haven't got the list, but that one no. of their relatives, yeah, somebody in more modern history has, has oh, so died there, also. Yeah, they're up there. They're, they're right up against seven. that number seven. I really want to. After, so they just keep messing around, messing around until somebody finally dies and they can, you know, solve the curse, I guess. If they do, you know somebody pushed them in just to see if that seven thing was <laughs> true. Number seven, lucky seven. <laughs> After years of excavation, pouring over the money pit with a fine tooth comb. The brothers made their first major discovery, a Spanish copper coin believed to be dated to the 17th century. Finding an ancient Spanish coin in the money pit is an exciting revelation, since finding one coin usually means there are more to be found nearby. Kind of like your couch. Could there be a stash of Spanish doubloons hidden on the island? That's I know that's always when they have that metal. They got that guy, I think uh-huh. it's Australian or something. He's got a metal detector, and he's all over the place, and they find buttons. And, oh, they found buttons. You know, oh, it's buttons. a button. Look at this button. They're all fascinated. It's smooth. Like, yeah, I could go in my backyard and probably find a button, too. In season three of their show, the brothers and their crew drained a large hole when they discovered several old antique artifacts. In one episode, a fellow treasure hunter presents them with what appears to be a Roman sword which, if authenticated, could prove that the Romans had actually touched down on American soil thousands of years ago and that the treasure of Oak Island may be far older and more valuable than anyone had previously thought. Or Or someone brought a sword and dropped it there. One of the pirates. The pirates. The pirates are. Booty. Brought some booty. Sword booty. One interesting person to appear on this show is researcher and historian Zen Halpern, author of the book The Templar Mission to Oak Island and Beyond, Search for Ancient Secret, The Shocking Revelations of a 12th Century Manuscript. That is a really long title. Well, I mean, it is. Yeah. Um, in her book, Halpern d- details her theory about the arrival of 12th century Templars to the island and provides as proof a carefully assembled duplicate of a French map dated to 1647. This map had the words hatch, valve, and anchor written on it. It also suggests that the great fortune stashed away on the little Canadian island could have originated in Africa. That would be our dog. That would be our dog, Max. I'm going to take a little detour here. But were the brothers able to use the map to find any actual treasure? The brothers Marty and Rick will never be able to complete their mission by themselves. They set out to find the treasure with their friends Dan and David Blankenship and Craig Tester. They've certainly built a courageous, experienced team with the know-how and experience to take the Oak Island search to the next level. And finally, after nearly two centuries of excavations, it seems like it's the brothers and their team that have made the most headway out of the treasure hunters and explorers that came before them. One person who added a lot of greatly needed expertise to the brothers undertaking in their pursuit of the Oak Island treasure was metal detecting expert and author of multiple <gasps> treasure hunting the... books, Gary Drayton. Yeah, we know about him. Drayton is an expert treasure hunting specializing in metal detection and the years of experience have proven invaluable to the brothers' work. Towards the end of season five, Gary and the brothers were working in Smith's Cove when they stumbled across something truly remarkable. Determined Dan Blankenship has the expertise and the lore to solve this mystery. He spent half a century drilling, digging, and discovering the secrets of Old Island. He bestowed his skills and knowledge to his son David. Even though David suffered a serious accident about three decades ago, he is healthy, 
and as active as ever, active as ever in pursuing the quest. The chase after the treasure has turned into an obsession. David Blankenship, the son of legendary treasure hunter Dan Blankenship, and also a longtime resident of Oak Island, still lives on the island and helps others. Like the Lagina brothers, I'm never going to say that right, with their pursuit. He moved to the island from his home in Florida about 50 years ago and never looked back. He's dedicated his life to treasure hunting and to the secrets of Oak Island. Marty and Rick use new technological improvements and top-of-the-line tools, which help show that a wood-lined shaft has been built in the pit by, near, by early excavators. The two brothers believe that it has been constructed in 1805 or thereabouts by the people who initially found the money pit and attempted to dig it and its treasure up. One of the group's most interesting finds was a small piece of material they believed to be a piece of a book, perhaps from a binder. They have three ring binders back in the old days. <laughs> That's what I thought when I read this. I said, is this I mean, maybe binder? they... It can be bound. I got okay. it. Okay. What manuscript did this piece of cloth bind? And what was its significance to the treasure that is supposedly hidden under the island's muddy ground? It was unclear but Rick believed that it was an essential part of the island's mystery. Shortly after the team found the book binder, they also found a piece of parchment made from animal skin with markings that look like text from a medieval manuscript. The brothers' theory posits that this piece of parchment might somehow be connected to a suite of correspondence between Frederick Blair and William Chapel which had begun sometime around the year 1897. Chappelle and, I don't know, is it Chapel or Chappelle? Chapel. Is it? Oh, it's Chapel. You know what is Chapel? It is Chapel. Yeah. Not like Dave Chappelle? Yeah, no, it's not Dave okay. Chappelle. Chapel and Blair were late 19th century Canadian treasure hunters and had believed that a parchment they'd found detailing the location of the treasure was of immense importance. After continuing excavations and mapping, the intrepid treasure hunters realized that the money pit was significantly deeper than anyone had originally been assumed. They attempted to drain the water once more, but as they did that, they noticed that something really odd. They noticed something really odd. There was water coming into the pit, continually filling it as they attempted to drain it. With the assistance of experts and using various high-tech techniques... The brothers realized that the water was coming in from a nearby beach. And what this is, I, I, they don't explain in this uh, art, well, this information, where I got this information, was that they f think it was a booby trap that they were, yes. you know. If you get close. You know, that it was something that they arranged so that, you know, people can't get to it, you know. My treasure. Yep. One of the most prominent discoveries that Marty and Rick made was of a human bone that actually belonged to a person of Middle Eastern ancestry. How a Middle Eastern person may have reached Oak Island, let alone come to be buried there, was a question that the brothers found extremely difficult to answer. The find raised more questions than answers. Marty expressed his excitement about the discovery and consequently thought of a potential association with the Knights Templar. Of course, because... They're from the Middle East, right? Yeah. Marty is absolutely convinced that their recent findings are meaningful and that they have proven something significant and extraordinary has occurred on the island many years ago. He said the evidence suggests that something quite odd did occur on this island prior to 1795. Something happened here prior to 1795 and apparently much earlier, at least 100 years. But what secrets could the island be hiding was it just buried gold or something even more meaningful? And who were the people who put it there? Rick, Marty, and Gary found a lead cross with a square hole at the top. This cross was traced back to between 1200 and 1600, thus making it medieval in origin, meaning, of course, that it originated in a time before America had been officially discovered by Christopher Columbus. How had a medieval cross found its way to pre-Columbian America? And who were the people who carried it there? Could Oak Island hold the key to changing everything we know about American history? 
The Knights Templar have been linked to Oak Island, as historical records suggest they had the motive and capability to hide treasures in the money pit in this mysterious island. The Order of the Knights Templar was a sprawling, multinational Catholic Christian organization founded by the Pope in 1119. With representatives all, all throughout Europe and in the Middle East, the Templars held huge financial power and political influence, but were also quite mysterious, prone to secretive rituals and religious practices. Despite the assumption that the lead cross is linked to the Knights Templar, historian Xenia Halpern has other thoughts about the origin. The cross might not be a cross and could be depicting the Phoenician goddess Tanit. Xenia Halpern claims that the Templars may have secretly worshipped Tenet, a claim similar to other claims that the state the Templars were secretly a cult demon worshippers. Oh my god. Whoa. Whoa. Another theory about these mythical crosses leads to a more materialistic view. The group proposed the hypothesis that numerous bits of lead, as in the crosses, would have been utilized to smuggle gold. Because gold and lead are both relatively heavy metals, it is possible to smuggle precious gold in case, encased in plain, cheap lead without fear of it being discovered by pirates, robbers, oh, I didn't say R, robbers R. and other unsavory types. Could the crosses have been used to smuggle gold? And if so, by who? If gold smugglers were working on the island, did they leave more than just crosses behind? Perhaps the most significant discovery that the brothers have made was the valuable rhodolite garnet. Their belief is that the stone might be 400 to 500 years old. Rhodolite, well, I think it's rhodolite stones have a, any rock hounds out there, sorry. <laughs> uh, beautiful purple raspberry shade. The interesting thing about this gem, however, is that the most commonly they are most commonly found in Africa, and while there are other deposits around the world, Norway, Sri Lanka, India, and Northern America, rhodolite garnets dated like the one found by the treasure hunting brothers have most likely been mined in Africa. Could there have been ships traversing the Atlantic from Africa to Oak Island? I don't know. Gary Drayton thought that this rhodolite stone could be 500 years old. And perhaps links to the legend of Marie Antoinette's gem. Likewise, such stories have been utilized by both Egyptians and Romans in religious ceremonies. Could such a precious, rare, and unlikely gem found, have found its way to a boggy pit in Nova Scotia? Does its existence mean that more treasure is likely to be found in the money pit? I don't know. They're digging this thing down. I mean, I'm watching this show and they just keep digging down. They put these giant sleeves in there and they're, now it might not be here. So they move the thing over and then they're digging down. They just look like Swiss cheese, you know, they're fun. And then I don't know if it's mentioned in here that they have, you know, a boggy swamp that they drained and they found a plank. And then one of the things is, I don't know if they're going to mention it here, one of the things in the show, and I did watch many episodes of the show, and that they think that the pirate ship actually went into what would have been uh, the swamp area, but it probably had more water in it at the time. And since then, the waters have, I, they, I think they're speculating that the waters receded, but that the, the ship disintegrated in the, in the swamp. Right. And that, you know, That's... that they were bringing their booty in from the ship and through this and putting it into this pit. Yeah. And then there should be, if that's the case, then there should be kind of a, a a cave or something like that, you know, that they could go through. But um, the way it was, what they've discovered is the reason it was um, flooding is there's three, they're made out of wood and then they found straw and um, other things that around, that wouldn't naturally be around these um, vessels or things that the water goes through and into the into the um the where they're digging the the pit the money the pit. pit for nearly two centuries there have been numerous attempts to find the hidden treasures somewhere on oak island many theories were attached to this quest like the holy grail the works of shakespeare and captain kidd's treasure it seems like every historical conspiracy theory imaginable has at one point or another become attached to Oak Island. 
Despite all the hearsay, one thing is generally believed and agreed upon by treasure hunters and keeps the brothers and their team going. There is a money pit, and it definitely contains something. Something. Well, I don't know. It does it contain something. Definitely. Definitely contains something. It says definitely. Water. It definitely definitely (laughs) contains something. Yeah. Salt water. Dirt. Dirt. And wood and some... I don't know why they would put... I mean, it fascinated... When I read the article, it was so fascinating to me that they're digging down and they're trying to find... You know, these things, but it's, um, I mean, it's something I, I know what treasure hunting, I, I can see where it would just be like, I know it. There's got to be Never something. Be rich. It's like, course, the, you know, they're funded by the history channel. It's so, like that, that you know, slot machine that's going to pay off. It's going to pay off. That's and right. It's a lot more dirty than being in the, you know. Yes, but it's much more exciting. The brothers believe that Sir Francis Drake had the knowledge, the skills, and the special engineering crew to create the money pit. Drake's command of coastal mining does put him in a good place in this respect, with a team capable of digging under the ocean bed. Drake, a notorious pirate, R. R, could have would have also had a good reason to hide treasure in an unreachable spot. He had hoarded vast amounts of loot over the years. I thought, loot. loot. And while some of it was taxed and went to the royal treasuries, it wouldn't be unreasonable to think that he'd hidden a personal stash. Well, of course. Well, yeah. Well, you got to hide. You know, you turn in some, you hide some. Yeah, even, even so, even pirates kept two sets of books. Two sets of books. <laughs> Doug Crowell, one of the brothers' colleagues, came across six pages of ship's logs in one entry. Well, a log entry. The text said it had been agreed that a deep pit be dug, and treasure securely buried. And the pit to have a secret entrance by a tunnel from the shore. So I think what they're doing is they're assuming this thing's under the... Is this a construction contract? Is this... Con- <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's what a, this yeah, was. Yeah, the a, world's this oldest is, contract. This is one of the first construction <laughs> contracts. And of course, the work was never done. The work was never done. Hopefully, and they weren't... Were they reimbursed? What do you call it? They yeah, yeah money we back. gave them the restitution. <laughs> um, instantly upon reading this... The brother's interest was piqued. Could it be that the tunnel which keeps the pit flooded is the same tunnel discussed in these maritime logs? Continually digging and more often than not, not finding anything. And there, you, this oh, summarizes no. the show in one sentence. So <laughs> when they say they don't find any, I mean, everybody's excited about everything. As I watched every week, I waited. I should have known better, but I've invested. I'll never get that time back. You will not. But look you at know, you're using it now. I'm using and now I continue to use it. And it's not that I hate the concept of treasure hunting and what they're trying to do. It feels like well, it's bu- it feels like it's it's just feels like it's kind of I don't want to say bogus. I think maybe that and I don't know if they discuss in this article and as we go along we'll figure it out. But there was another person that had bought several parcels of the land ages ago. And it's surmised that this guy found the treasure oh. and that, you know, it, it, there's nothing left that oh. they, he found the majority. He of the should treasure. have left something behind for other people to find, you know. But yeah, yeah, no. Would you? What would you leave behind for other people to find? A chest. That's yeah, like... the empty chest. That's <laughs> in, uh, yeah, with a note in said sucker. Yeah. Yeah. So every once in a while, the brothers take their crew and look at the wealth of treasure they've already found. To remind themselves to keep digging. There is always a reason for celebration, especially when hard work finally pays off. The Green Brothers and their dedicated team, and there's a picture of them looking at their recent findings, and it looks like, you know, it looks like... Oh, it's uh, cute. They've got all their you, stuff. You want to see it with the stuff all laid out on there, and it really doesn't look like it amounts to a great... But I'm not an archaeologist, so I'm going to... Yeah. You know, we'll kind of just go with that, but I'm glad, you know, they're excited... They're doing something together, seemingly. Yeah, um, it's a family. They bring in. I mean, they bring in these. They bring in these massive um, drilling rigs oh, and I've things. Seen Every time they bring it, and then they, and then they have to get permission from the island. Yeah, you know, the island. Oh, they've stopped it because we don't have permission don't to do this. Don't sink the island. Uh, based on their recent groundbreaking discoveries, Rick and Marty know and believe they are closer than ever to finding the hidden treasure of Oak Island. This is true since they found a precious stone that is registered as 
official, quote, treasure by the Treasure Trove license. Ooh, there's a I didn't know there was such a thing. That's right. Marty Blake said, it's like a lightning rod has gone off. They continue to keep making all kinds of discoveries. Now that the floodgates are open, we cannot wait to see what they find next. Yeah, we just can't wait to see the next button or or coin. Uh, yeah. And they say, you know, that people this has been going on forever, people looking for this treasure. People could have lost buttons and coins looking for what they think is the treasure and not finding anything. Well stop wearing antique <laughs> buttons while you're out of the goddamn <laughs> We're up to the sixth season of The Curse of Oak Island now, and Rick and Marty have begun excavating Smith's Cove in earnest. And after closing the excavated area off using an elaborate steel structure, have made some very interesting discoveries indeed. Under the mud and sediment, they began to unearth a strange U-shaped structure, and after going through the rubble with metal detector, discovered something they've been waiting to find for years. A gold-covered coin gold colored it's not covered it's gold colored <laughs> while the coin yeah, it. <laughs> while the coin needs to be cleaned up and properly examined from preliminary microscopy it seems it may date to the early 1700s <sighs> placing it right around the time oak island's treasure is dated to could this be a part of the famed oak island treasure could it could it it sounds like you're starting to sound like the show <laughs> Because they just, they keep recapping. It's all recaps and 10 minutes of new, it's right. uh, it seems like 10 minutes of new stuff. There have been a lot of ups and downs and discoveries in the past couple seasons of The Curse of Oak Island. The excavation team keeps finding interesting artifacts here and there. But during season seven, one of the biggest focuses was based on a potential tunnel discovery. Yeah, a flood tunnel in the muddy pit is the next best clue to confirm whether the myth of Oak Island's treasure truly exists or not. I think, I thought they knew already the flood tunnel was the three <laughs> box things that were going into, by the, uh, onto the shore that right. ran the water into the, into the pit. So I don't know if this, um, tunnel season, I have not watched any of season six. Well, you're going to have to watch. Yeah, now I'm going to have to now watch. Why, if this is a new tunnel or is this just something? Well, they seem to continuously run into dead ends. That is until the final quarter of 2020. So while everybody's 2020 sucked, that's what that's where they're going to find stuff, right? In 2019, there were a few disappointments when it came to finding tunnels. However, once season eight, and I put in... Oh my God, because... Yeah, da wonder, damn, wonder, we're in eight seasons now, rolled around in the last few months of 2020. The Croom see. I mean, just eight seasons. I think there's ten Didn't, episodes a season. I think we probably just deleted a bunch of those, too. Yeah, it's fine. I can find it. And can I'll get you the DVD set, the <gasps> box set. Happy birthday! <laughs> Yay! The few, around the last few months of 2020, the crew seemed to have dug up and recovered even more artifacts that lead them to believe they're one step closer to the, uncovering the mythical treasure. Um, they excitedly dug up a potential ship slipway to transfer cargo, like treasure perhaps, sand instead of soil, indicating a handmade flood tunnel and tools from centuries ago. Maybe this year they'll finally find the treasures. Now we've been watching, I, you and I have even together separately watched this thing over the years. 2014, I mean I think this started well, like we're up in to 2014. Season eight. And, you know, they really aren't there. I mean, you'd think in six, seven years, in seven years, they could find out what the hell is going on there. I mean. Well, and it's not like they're digging with a shovel. Yeah, they have, they have a cool well, One of them of owns women's. like this construction equipment company I mean, they've or got something. cameras that they're sending down. I mean, it seems like an island is not that difficult if there's something under that island we have x-ray i mean you see these people that go out you know when yeah ground I mean, penetrating ground penetrating right yeah i mean we just just for doing yeah. construction you have to have these guys that go out and send these cameras down to see you know to check compaction well, they have these they've had these machines it's kind of like skinwalker they have these machines that roll over there and the 
and they're on this it looks pretty flat i mean where they are i don't want to say flat but it looks smooth yeah and it's not like it's well, you it's know not they, rocks and stuff no so they're um they're putting this machine on there and it, it oh there's a and they find a void in right. underneath and they dig down this void and they don't find anything one time they found a um con concrete box and then right. they dug down and hit it and then they brought it up and there was some wood in it i remember and the box, remember that yes, box. I did see the box. like what the hell nothing's in this concrete box it's the box way down there you know it's like nothing like why was there found in there i mean this island because nobody's this island hasn't really ever been like inhabited like civilization wise right why right i can't speak anymore um it's never had like a town like like uh, there's not the I, the part that they're doing has never been civilized. Yeah, it hasn't been occupied with right. any people. And uh, yeah, and that's what I I'm always confused about this whole thing as we watch and I, it really feels like it's starting to peter out. I mean the I mean, but a concrete box that's just weird. I mean yeah, because we're talking stuff that's going to be dating back to you yeah. know concrete isn't really that old as far as you know, I don't think they were. I don't think pirates were using a lot of concrete. I mean, there might be limitations of how invasive they can dig in there, too. Right. Well, I mean, that's my, what I, yeah. my opinion is just start freaking digging. But you then, know, and use, you know, and use, we, we do excavation you, all the time. What happens if you punch, 90 feet down. If you punch a hole in the island and it sinks. Well, you know, that may be what they're worried, <laughs> that's maybe what they're worried about. I don't know. I don't know but how stable Just this dig the is. whole thing open. I, or maybe they're finding, trying to get to that point where they actually, I mean, they they punch, they they discover something. Okay, well, dig it all out. Right. Let's find where this thing's going. I don't know why we have to. We it just seems like they're dragging it out for. Oh, you mean you know, to make it a show? Make it a show. To make it a show. You know. But I kind of dug up some. Uh, I mean, we're near. The reason I'm I, I I know this is your favorite subject, but and uh, this is a surprise to Deb. Deb gave me a great lead to uh, do an episode. Of course, I ruined it by having this. But um, it's not ruined. This is a great concept. I get it. I understand. I'm excited for them. If it's real and they're not just... I, it just feels like we're just getting milked. It honestly just feels like they're just, they just keep doing... It's either been found well, it's or... it's entertaining. It's entertainment and I get it. And they're making money. And I, it feels like the... I don't know. I ended my interest in it few years back i didn't i'm like nah it's find something you know but if they find everything then you know that the show's over right but they do have a spinoff which concerns me and then they're they're going to other country going to ireland and things you know they're visiting ireland or their new oak islands yeah i don't know they're visiting there because there's the history of where this may have originated oh maybe yeah. you know so which makes sense i mean you you, you gotta milk you gotta roll out gotta milk it but I pulled a couple of reviews for the show, which isn't really a review to what we, we have to separate the fact that there's a show and the fact that there's an activity going on. I found but a, this person, go ahead. I found a quarter on my walk today. Am I a, you have to have my that treasure, certified I'm as a, a treasure hunter? Well, you have to get it certified as okay. actual treasure. So this person says, I've, lo I've long been fascinated by Oak Island. Thankfully, I'm not so obsessed as those who have lost fortunes and sometimes their lives in search for whatever lies at the bottom of possibly the most elaborate booby trap ever devised by man or nature. And maybe there's other booby traps in it, but, you know, well, the story... Hopefully, hopefully nothing dangerous. I mean, that's, you well, know... Well, I think they're, they're being... I think one of the other things is they're being careful yeah. because they don't know what the hell is going on down there. I mean, it's Sir Francis Drake. I mean, well, yeah, they sounds... say he was able to devise this this booby trap of the treasure. Like the and how do they get it? Okay, so they booby trap the whole thing. They must have known. Well, then you would know. It's like some way to get in there. It's like the Goonies. Yeah, one I love that movie. Yeah, you know, One-Eyed Willie or whatever his name was. Yeah. When he he had the booby traps all the way, you had to play had to play the the piano. John Matusek. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> it's, it's a classic movie the twos <laughs> loved Mutuzak the story is well documented and well known and begins as early as the latter part of the 18th century when evidence of a pit lined with layers of stone and logs suggested something valuable hidden underneath the money pit excavation has been ongoing since that time with treasure hunters digging even deeper 
but finding neither treasure nor any indication that they've reached the bottom of what are clearly many layers of construction. Theories abound as to what is down there, some fairly plausible and others as wild as could be imagined. Well, back in the 18th century, wouldn't you think they could that there's something we could overcome? You think that they made in the eight? You know, they we, stacked. are they? I mean, there is times where we run across things that are you know unexplainable and can't explain the pyramids. Yeah, and I was that's exactly what I was going to say. How they do that? I yeah. mean, who knows what? I don't really think those this east is the those, same. those giant heads. The yeah. giant, the giant heads. Who nobody knows how they made those. Yeah, the Easter Island. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is interesting. Enter the two brothers who have a stake in Oakland determined to use modern machinery and methods in pursuit of the solutions of the Oak Island mystery. And, you know, this goes on and on. And then um, they end with um, yet to be rewarded by a few interesting and suggestive discoveries that if I were Rick or Marty would be motivated to keep trying and it's you know four people found this positive review helpful. Hey, well, I mean this. You know what these guys are doing is fascinating for a lot of people. They're they have the money to do it. They have the personality to do it because not everybody has the personality to keep going. Not get you know you see them every now and then you know. Some, well, they have a lot of talented along. people working on this and a lot of experts. Yeah. And I just can't. Well, you have to have I that can't. personality that will bring people out to help you. You have to have that personality to keep pursuing something that, you know, there's got to be a lot of people telling them, dude, you, this is never going to happen. But, you know, what if it does? Yeah. And, and, and if they give up, somebody else will take over. This is not going to stop. You know, there's, there's not, you know, it would be like the slot machine again. You know, when you leave a slot machine, you can't go back down that aisle. You have to stay out of that area. Because the old lady that uh -huh. sits down right after you, it's a big. And you just want to go just, I think I can't. How many times have I heard that story? I yeah. can't live like that. No, no. That could have been that's, me. That's why you keep playing until you're completely out of money. Because somebody's going to win and it's going to, it could be me. Then there's Pat, who says he only gave it two out of two out of five stars. And again, we're not rating the show. We get it. I mean, um, you know, this show is really slow moving. Very little happens in each episode. They could easily have presented the one hour, actually 41 minutes with the commercials. Whoa, he's timing it. Show in about five or ten minutes if they stopped repeating over and over the same idiotic artistic renditions. Actually, I think they could present the whole season in about 30 minutes. Yeah, well, but, you know, just in case you missed that last episode, they're going to show you what happened. Uh, oh, they do over repeat. And over. They do repeat. All of, those kind of, all of those kind of shows do. And all of those those shows that, that are in that, in that format constantly go back to what you just heard. You can, if you keep your finger on that fast forward button, you can get through those shows really fast. Because they're constantly telling you, oh, remember in the last episode, this is what happened. Oh, well, you know. Yeah. The, um, so we, then we, um, it's really slow. And let me say, this person says, uh -huh. let me save you any suspense. Nothing ever really happens Aww. in the first season or the second season or in the, on in second, third, and yet fourth. And yet they're still watching. You know and yet are. they're still watching they're it. Still and watching. I have to tell you, every time I see it, we did have it recorded. <laughs> I see it and I said, you know, I kind of want to watch it. But I have a feeling it's the same thing over and over. It's like, why punish yourself? And, you know, and there's... There's actually, you know, clickbait where they say they've found the treasure and then it leads on to <laughs> nothing. <you know. laughs> they got you. So then there's, they have a spinoff. Oh, and we've then seen the spinoff. Seen the spinoff, but we haven't watched the show. So I don't know what. What? Uh, there's a spinoff for that show, not this show. Oh, okay. There's another spinoff that they're making where they're searching for treasure in other places. Well, you we'll have to. Have you seen the. I have not seen the. I videos. really like. So you yeah. watch that channel. I don't watch that channel. History is my, yeah, is my groove. I love the history channel. Lots of UFO stuff on the history yeah, channel. Yeah, you, you watch your and, and, and channel. And again, the Alien Pro podcast is about anything weird. And it doesn't get any weirder than a show that keeps digging into the ground and finding virtually nothing. You know, but keeps people watching. That's right. Then there's the other, what we consider the spinoff, the old secret of Skinwalker Ranch. Seen it. 
you know, we've seen all the episodes of that one. The other one's coming in in the 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 next season, which I really feel is going to be the final season, um, because we this is an this is something we study. The, you know, the events of Skinwalker, and um, I call it the Clone Show. It's because it's a kind of virtually a clone of the Curse of Oak Island. It's the same thing. They keep repeating. It's the same show, only it's UFOs and and you know removing. You know, lids to concrete things and then getting you know and getting radiation people, people get a lot of woozy on that show a lot of yeah a lot of bumps on their head woozy on the show so you know we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up another episode of the alien probe podcast thanks for listening we welcome comments and questions or requests to alien probe podcast at gmail.com visit us on facebook at alienprobe.net Listen to us on YouTube. Thank you very much. We're getting very popular. Lots of uh, lots of listens on that. We're gonna we're working on getting video. Debbie got me a nice backdrop. I'm in a, I'm on a spaceship right now. So uh, future episodes will be me on my, uh, you know, on the deck. We're you know. Yeah, right here. Is this my we're, seat? We're in the cockpit. Okay. You're in that. You're That's on that side. That's my seat. Okay. Check us on Twitter at Alien Probe Pod. Thanks to our senior producer, Robert Anthony, the, the, the traveling Robert Anthony. Hi. He's uh, going places these days and road trips. Hi, and um, Dr. Pill will be back next Saturday. So he's uh, just spoke with him. So wrapping it up. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Deb. Thank you.